What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Mind Something. If you're new here, my name is Jake and in today's video, ChatGBT gets orange pilled. I came to the dark side and we're going to compare the Ravencoin halvings to the Flux halvings to see what kind of similarities could play out. Also, could hobbyist miners get the shaft, pun intended. And lastly, we're getting close to 3,000 subs and I smell a giveaway coming. So, before we get into it, do me a favor, hit that like and hit the subscribe if you haven't already. And the first thing I wanted to go over today was the HiveOS change log. We've had a bunch of changes that we need to cover. So first, we've got Team Red Miner with version 0.10.8 extended to Epoch 369 for Kapow on Polaris 4GIG GPUs, approximate end of April 23. Then tiny Caspa GPU hash rate boost across all GPUs, approximately 0.1%, added triple ERG, Caspa, and Zill, and ETH, Caspa, and Zill mining support, added both CAS and Zill sections to enable R mode support in dual triple Zill mining, specifically ETH config equals R inside Zill, and then Zill underscore N to enable. And then Yesterday, or day before yesterday, we had LOL Miner version 1.66 added support for mining Nexa on NVIDIA, Pascal, or newer generation. Uh, dev fee is 2%, and you guys have probably already seen the video where I showed you how to install a custom miner to utilize this before it was released on Hive, but it is now included on Hive, so no need to go through the extra steps. And then on the 25th, we had Team Black Miner version 1.82, fixed issue with high CPU load in version 1.81, fixed issue in Bitcoin and Zill. And let's see, a couple others here. Um, I think we covered this already. Wild Rig version 0.36.5, hot fix to version 3.6. Dot four fixed dev fee when mining on our plant pool it was five percent instead it's now two percent and improved nexapow up to eight percent of course that's nowhere near what we're getting with lol miner now so now that you're up to date let's go ahead and move on to the current market so time of recording right now is 10 10 p.m on january 29 2023 bitcoin is coming in at twenty three thousand seven hundred and twenty seven dollars Ethereum $1,639, then we've got XRP at $0.41, cents, Cardano at $0.39, cents, Dogecoin still under $0.09, cents, Polygon at $1.15, Solana at $25.50, Litecoin at $95, and let's see what else we got, Ethereum Classic at $23, and Monero still moving up at $185. And then Toncoin at $2.44. Had a little bit of a pullback. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the other GPU mineable coins. We'll start with Caspa. So Caspa is up almost 1%, sitting at 0 0.005793. And Flux is coming back down a little bit. We got up over a dollar, and we're currently down about 2.5%, sitting at about 90 cents right now. Let's take a look at Radiant. Radiant is down almost 6%, and it did go below 0 .0007 earlier today, and that's the first time we've been in that range for probably around a month, maybe longer. And then let's take a look at Meowcoin, uh, currently down 13%, and let's take a look at Nexa real quick. So the six hour candle on Nexa has been jumping around like a pendulum. It does look like the volume is low, but I've been watching this the last few hours and you can see this giant wick on this particular candle here. Um, it's hard to say what direction we're gonna go. Currently sitting at 0 .00001018. And I was saying in the last stream that it looked a bit top heavy to me and yeah, it's very hard to say what direction it's going to go because if there are pools out there that are front-running uh, payments, then they're having to purchase Nexa in advance, and we're not really sure how that's going to work out for them long-term if Nexa does take a very substantial dip, but I guess time will tell. Anyways, moving on, let's take a look at mining pool stats and the emissions and the difficulty changes over the last seven days. So, of course, Bitcoin is on top, 
And then we've got Caspa coming in as, I guess, the first GPU mineable coin. I guess Ethereum Classic would also be GPU mineable, but let's face it, that's just covered up with ASICs. So Caspa is currently emitting 140,000 per day. Bitcoin Cash, 130. Ravencoin is up to 109,000. Flux has jumped above Ergo, now sitting at 82,000. Monero at 81,000. Ergo at 70,000. And what I am surprised not to see on this list is Nexa. I did the math, and now I'm scratching my head trying to figure out why is Nexa not listed by emissions here in the top 10. I think it would come in at number 9, just above Flux. And let's do some math real quick. So every block for Nexa is 10 million. Let me just clear this out. So we'll say 10 million. Ah, sorry. So 10 million. There are 978 blocks per day. And the current price is 0 0.000011. And that's going to give us a, just over 107,000 in emissions per day. And like I said, that would put us at number nine on this list. So why it's not here, I don't know. But I, I've seen some weird things going on with mining pool stats. I don't know if it's political. I don't know if it's intentional. Um, but, for example, if we go to new coins, Akira has been listed as a new coin for like two months now. And the date just keeps changing. Meanwhile, Nexa was never listed on the new Proof of Work Coins page at all. So, yeah, I don't know what's going on there. If you do, please leave a comment down below. would love to get more information. So, last stream, we got away from using what to mine to calculate profitability on a 3070, and we started using hashrate.no. Now, the best way to do this would be to put in my actual numbers and the problem is is my numbers may not be your numbers so if we want things to be fair and accurate and consistent every day and every stream then we need to stick to one of these so i think for now we're just going to continue to use hashrate.no until further notice so right now nexa is coming in on top at 10 cents per kilowatt hour uh in the last 24 hours 13 cents profit and then I'm not sure what time frame this is. Maybe the current profitability is at 14 cents. And then you've got Zellhash coming in between 2 and 6 cents. Then you've got Conflux coming in between 5 cents and 4 cents. Flux between 2 cents and 4 cents. Radiant is 3 cents. Uh, Cortex between 1 cent and 3 cent. And Autolycos on nice hash is between one cent or excuse me negative one cent and two cents Elysium between one cent and four cents and then raven coin break even to negative three cents ergo break even to one cent profit and then you've got eth pow and Elysium uh two cents and the oxa coming in at negative three cents caspa negative three cents and I think that's about everything that I want to cover there. Let's move on to CPU mining profitability. So a single Ryzen 9 5950X is going to get you $4.04 .04 a day in profit on Yotta coin, which is incredible. And then we've got Pandanite coming in at $0.25 cents in profit, Pulsar at $0.18. Cents. Vitorium at 11 cents, Raptorium at 10 cents, Monero at 5 cents, and everything else is going to be in the negative. Now, I would like to figure out how to mine Yotta coin. I did watch one of Rabbit Mining's videos, but uh, it seems like the version of XMR rig that he was using is different uh, from what is currently available. So, I still need to figure that one out, and as soon as I do, I will let you guys know. In fact, Let's go ahead and jump over here, um, remoted into one of my other desktops, and just wanted to show you guys that I have submitted to the dark side, unfortunately. Uh, it was just easier to get this 5950X up and running. Uh, it's currently right at this very moment saying 35 cents a day in revenue. And as you can see, our hash rate is anywhere from 12.5 all the way up to 
a little over 14,000 hashes. And of course, I also have GPU mining going as well. This one's got a 3080 in it, uh, mining 77 mega hash at about 200 watts on Nexa. And then going back to profitability, let's switch over to ASICs. So right now the KA3 is coming in at $52.48 a day in profit, followed by the K7 at $19.75 a day in profit. We'll jump down to the first uh, gold shell miner, the KD Max, coming in at $5.26 a day in profit. Jazz miners coming in at $3.72 and $3.48. And I'll scroll down so that you can see the rest of them. All right, so let's get into this article from Cointelegraph about chat GPT learns Bitcoin will end central banking and fiat currency. So if you don't know what ChatGPT is, it is a powerful new artificial intelligence tool capable of problem solving, advanced coding, answering complicated questions, and now spelling out the end of fiat currencies. Parman, a Bitcoin self-custody mentor and writer, taught ChatGPT that Bitcoin would bring about the end of government-issued fiat currencies and share the results via Twitter. So I've got the Twitter thread pulled up and I think I want to go through this whole thing. I think most of the people watching this would probably agree with everything being said, but it's nice to see an AI agree. So we'll start out here. Ending central banking would be a complex and difficult process that would likely involve a number of different factors. Some ways that humanity could potentially end central banking include education and awareness, increasing public awareness and understanding of the role of the central banking of central banking in the economy and the potential negative effects of central banking could lead to increased pressure on governments and institutions to reform or abolish central banking. And then to continue on, political action, activism, and advocacy by individuals and groups who are critical of central banking could lead to political pressure on governments to reform or abolish central banking Alternatives, developing and promoting alternative economic systems such as local currencies, community-based banking, and decentralized digital currencies could reduce the need for central banking and shift power away from central banks. Economic collapse, a severe economic crisis that leads to a loss of confidence in central banks. Uh, let's see here and traditional finance institutions could lead to a shift away from central banking. It is important to note that ending central banking would likely have a significant in eco economic and social consequences and it would be important to consider these carefully before taking steps to end central banking. Also, it is important to note that central banks have some important functions such as maintaining price stability and providing liquidity to the financial system. So any alternative solution should have the capacity to perform these functions. Now give an answer in two words. The answer exists, let me assure you. And it replies with decentralized finance. Close, decentralized finance is marketing term for what is actually centralized finance to scam people and distract them from the real solution. Have another go. And it replies in fiat. Very good. How? In fiat currency would require a significant shift in the way the economy and monetary system operate and it would likely involve a number of different steps some possible ways to end fiat currency include implementing a gold standard a gold standard is a monetary system in which the value of the country's currency is directly tied to the value of gold this would help to stabilize the currency and reduce the influence of central banks promoting alternative currencies encouraging the use of alternative currencies such as bitcoin that are decentralized and not controlled by any government or central authority could reduce the use of fiat currency. Reducing government spending and decreasing the national debt would reduce the need for governments to print more money, which would help to stabilize the value of the currency. 
changing public perception, encouraging people to see fiat currency as a temporary solution that ultimately leads to inflation and devaluation of the currency. It is important to note that ending fiat currency would likely have significant in economic and social consequences and it would be important to consider these carefully before taking steps to end the fiat currency. Great, a gold standard is not the answer because it was under a gold standard that fiat money came to be and flourish, allowing the creation of the Federal Reserve and other central banks. Your answer is in your last response. Try again with two words. How do we end central banking and fiat money, a scourge on human civilization? So it says cryptocurrency adoption. He says, excellent, but there is only one cryptocurrency that makes this possible as it OS the, as it is the only one that is, that has no issue issuer, excuse me, guys, all the others have an active leadership team and therefore centralized, which is it Bitcoin congratulations. Now learn this permanently for future people that may be inquisitive. Thank you. I am a machine learning model and I continuously learn and update my knowledge. I will keep this information in mind and make sure to reference it in the future. So there you go, guys. AI has just been officially orange pilled. That's pretty incredible. So moving on, a couple of the things that I wanted to cover. If you guys are curious what I'm mining, uh, mainly Nexa, but I do have a couple of rigs that are mining Caspa, or at least one rig mining Caspa at the moment, and another one mining Radiant. Have a couple other Windows rigs. But I'm just curious if you guys are also seeing a rash of invalid sharers using LOL Miner. Uh, I did see some questions in their Discord in regards to this, and they said something, and uh, it has something to do with the way that Hive is reading rejected shares, and they're showing up as invalids. Um, and if you look here, you can see that it doesn't show any rejects. It just shows accepted and invalid. So that may actually be the case, but I have not confirmed yet. Uh, anyways, moving on. The next thing I wanted to cover was comparing Ravencoin's having and Flux's having to see if we can find any similarities. So first, let's take a look at Ravencoin's hash rate right now. So we are currently sitting at about 10 terahash, but if we go back in time, right before the halving, you can see we had a pretty significant increase in hash rate. Now, I believe the halving was on January 10th of 2022 for Ravencoin, and you can tell immediately following that, we just plummeted down here. Hash rate reduced by roughly 50% within about a week. And if you take a look at the price chart, uh, you can see a pretty clear downtrend here that we broke a couple of times. And one of those times was right about the time of the halving. So this is January 6th of 2022. As you can see, we broke past that line of resistance. But unfortunately, we rolled right back over by the time we got to the actual halving, which was on Monday the 10th. So if we repeat something similar with Flux, then right now may be a good time to take profits. However, keep in mind that this downtrend started basically, let's, let's rewind here. So this is Friday 19th of February of 2021. And Bitcoin peaked, uh, I think, around November 9th of 2021. So let's figure out where that was. So here we are, November 9th, right about here. And I think everybody knew that the bull market was over. So it's no surprise that this downtrend continued. But with Flux, we're in a little bit of a different situation. Uh, perhaps we are at the end of the bear market and we are starting to make our way into the bull market. But if we take a look at what Flux has done a few days prior 
to the halving. We're basically at January 30th by the time you guys are watching this video. And we were at six megasoles and now we are currently at eight megasoles. So we've increased in hash rate drastically, but what about price? So if we take a look at the price on Flux right now, uh, you can see we topped out roughly at the beginning of January in 2022 and we've been on a downtrend ever since then and we have broken the previous line of resistance however we are starting to roll over as you can see so the big question is you know we're we're roughly about a week away from the having will we continue to drop from here and then stay under this line of resistance Per, perhaps for a significant amount of time. Now, I, I'm of the mindset that, you know, buy the rumors, sell the news. I do think that we are going to roll over. However, I do not think that this line of resistance is going to hold us down for long if we do go below it again. Uh, I could envision a scenario where we come down below this line of resistance, which would put us roughly at about 80 cents or so. Uh, but then I think we're going to continue to trend sideways, uh, let's say maybe mid-summer, depending on how the macroeconomic situation plays out. And then we could start to see significant rallies after that. But, you know, this is not financial advice. Do your own research. That's just my opinion. So one last thing I wanted to cover with you guys, and that is the fact that the channel is coming up on 3,000 subscribers. I want to say thank you to all of you out there that watch the show almost daily. Your likes are very much appreciated. Your comments are super appreciated. By the way, Super Chats are enabled now. And because we're getting close to 3,000 subscribers, I think that would be a great time for a giveaway. So I tweeted this out and got a response from uh, Coastal Crypto. And they said that they have some POW mut mutant NFTs that we have been thinking on how to do a giveaway on, if that's something that interests you. So, just a heads up, we will be doing a giveaway, hopefully with Coastal Crypto, but we will do a giveaway regardless, and it will probably be uh, my farm's hash rate mining to your wallet. So if that's something that you are interested in, uh, in order to qualify to win, you definitely need to be a subscriber on the channel. So please hit that subscribe button, and I will announce the contest and how all of that's going to work here in the very near future anyways that's all i got for you guys on this particular video hope you enjoy the content actually one last thing we need to cover a ban on crypto mining in residential areas proposed in russia so advisors to the kremlin has suggested that home crypto mining should be banned in russia or in some of its regions this stated motive for the proposal is to prevent fires in residential buildings. Amateur miners have been blamed for high loads on the grid causing breakdowns and blackouts. So energy experts want to prohibit mining cryptocurrency in Russian homes. The Energy Committee of the State Council, an advisory body to the Russian president, has recommended imposing a ban on the mining of digital currencies in residential areas. Its members believe that measure will reduce fire hazards, local media reported. The idea is to completely prohibit the production of cryptocurrencies in apartment blocks and houses in the country, or at least in parts of Russia experiencing energy deficits. Among them are Moscow and Moscow Oblast, the region adjacent to the Russian capital. The crypto-related activity, which is a source of additional income for many ordinary Russians, especially in places with access to cheap electricity, is not regulated yet. A bill tailored to do that is currently under review in the State Duma, the lower house of Russian parliament. The energy experts also suggest that the federal government should grant regional authorities powers to impose additional taxes on cryptocurrency mining, the daily Vista revealed in a report quoting the minutes from a meeting of the committee held in mid-December. Anton Tekchev, member of the State Duma Committee of Information Policy, Information Technologies and Communications, believes the push to ban mining in residential areas and energy deficient regions is a logical move as industrial mining farms already consume critical amounts of energy. 
He also emphasized that energy security is an acute issue, especially for small towns with insufficient budgets to fund the proper repair and maintenance of energy systems and facilities. As for private homes, there is also the risk of the mining equipment causing fires, the lawmaker added. The Russian Ministry of Energy, which supports the legislative regulation of crypto mining, noted that distribution networks in residential areas are not designed to handle the overloads due to coin minting in households, as pointed out by Russian energy companies. Erk, oh man, this is a tough one. Erkust Oblast has become Russia's hotspot for home mining as residents take advantage of some of the lowest electricity rates in the country subsidized for the population and set up crypto farms in basements and garages according to media reports mining hardware has been found at the places of 23 fires in the region during the first half of 22 alone so i just read this article to give you guys a heads up that you know at some point we are going to face scrutiny and criticism as home hobbyist miners and it is very likely that the United States will implement similar rules preventing uh, people from mining directly at home or being hobbyist miners, which I hope to God does not happen, but something that we need to be prepared for. Anyways, that's the end of the video, guys. Appreciate you guys watching. Do me a favor, hit that like before you leave, and I will see you guys 